Remakes often get a bad rap, but every now and then, a film comes along that not only lives up to the original, but sometimes even surpasses it. These movies prove that with the right touch, a remake can be just as magical, if not more. Here are 14 movies that were so good, we didn't mind they were remakes. The Departed. This isn't just a movie, it's a masterclass in tension, character development, and how to do a Boston accent without sounding like a cartoon character. What's that you say? It's a remake? Of course it is. The original film, Infernal Affairs from Hong Kong, is no slouch, but under the deft touch of Martin Scorsese, The Departed became an instant classic. Matt Damon, Leonardo DiCaprio, and Jack Nicholson gave performances that shone like a lighthouse on the foggiest of nights. Deal in deception here. You won't be paid as a regular cop, but there's a bonus involved. So what do I do? Get your hands on me. Hey. Well, I'm the guy that tells you there are guys you can hit and there's guys you can't. Now, that's not quite a guy you can't hit, but it's almost a guy you can't hit. Ocean's Eleven. What's better than a band of charming crooks? A band of charming crooks played by George Clooney, Brad Pitt, and Matt Damon, of course. This remake of the 1960 Rat Pack vehicle is as slick as Danny Ocean's hair and twice as entertaining. Director Steven Soderbergh took the original's concept and turned it into a film so cool it's practically cryogenic. Between the witty banter, clever heist plot, and Julia Roberts being Julia Roberts, it's easy to forget this one's a remake. No offense to Sinatra fans. We're just supposed to walk out of there with $150 million in cash without getting stopped? Yeah. Working with proper villains again. Two, one. Why don't you check the batteries? True Grit. The Coen brothers are known for their original and quirky films, but when they ventured into remake territory, they didn't just step up to the plate, they hit a home run. The original True Grit, starring John Wayne, is a staple of the Western genre, but this remake brings a freshness that the genre often lacks. With Jeff Bridges' grizzled performance, Haley Steinfeld's breakout role, and the Coen brothers' unique touch, this is one remake that made us tip our cowboy hats in respect. You got a lot of experience with bounty hunters, do you? That is a silly question. I am 14. You can run on for a long time. Time for you to go home. I don't like you. I will not go back, not without Cheney, dead or alive. We get it. A Star is Born has been made and remade more times than your grandma's famous apple pie. But the 2018 version, directed by Bradley Cooper and starring Lady Gaga, had us forgetting about all its previous iterations. This emotionally charged drama showcases an electric chemistry between its leads and a raw, mesmerizing performance by Lady Gaga. And the soundtrack? It was so good that we'd forgive this movie for actually being a remake of a remake of a remake. I just don't feel comfortable. Why wouldn't you feel comfortable? Almost every single person has told me they liked the way I sounded, but that they didn't like the way I look. I think you're beautiful. The Ring. When Hollywood decided to remake the iconic Japanese horror film Ringu, many were skeptical. After all, translating the cultural nuances and inherent fear of a foreign horror film can be a tough gig. However, The Ring, featuring a nightmarish videotape, kids, ask your parents, and a television-dwelling ghost became a worthy remake. It maintained the original's creepiness and introduced the brilliant Naomi Watts to the horror genre. Let's just say, after watching this, we were happy to switch to DVD. Images on the tape, they're leading us somewhere. She's showing you the horses. You saw it. The Birdcage. Now here's a remake that took the brilliance of the original and added a dash of Robin Williams' magic. A reimagining of the French film, this American version, set in the flashy world of South Beach, is a riot from start to finish. 
Williams and Nathan Lane as a gay couple pretending to be straight for the sake of their son's in-laws is comedic gold. The performances are nuanced, the script is clever, and the humor is, well, as flamboyant as you'd expect. Who's his father? His father is in the arts. You do an eclectic celebration of the dance. You do fussy, fussy, fussy. You do Martha Graham, Martha Graham, Martha Graham. Or Madonna, Madonna, Madonna. But you keep it all inside. What does the mother do? She's a housewife. Oh, I could play it straight. Insomnia, directed by Christopher Nolan, is a remake of a 1997 Norwegian film of the same name. The American version sees Al Pacino as a detective with a murky past, Robin Williams in a rare serious role, and, well, insomnia in the land of the midnight sun. The film's suspense is beautifully crafted, and the psychological torment Pacino's character endures is palpable. It's a subtle, slow-burn thriller that proves remakes can stand on their own two feet, even when they're a little sleep-deprived. He will taunt you. You and I share a secret. We know how easy it is to kill somebody. He will torment you. It can't be easy after three days of no sleep. Are you seeing things yet? You know, those little tricks of light. He will get inside your head. There's a ferry about five miles north of Night Mute. I'll be on 11 o'clock. Let's take a trip to the classic sci-fi lane. Invasion of the Body Snatchers is a remake of the 1956 movie of the same name. Now, while the original was a solid film in its own right, the 1978 version took the paranoia and horror to the next level. The remake, with its unforgettable ending and a masterful performance by Donald Sutherland, made us gladly welcome these body-snatching aliens into our movie collections. From deep space, sleep. Sleep. the seed is planted. Sleep. Sleep. Terror grows. Sleep. Heat. Would you believe that one of the greatest crime thrillers of all time, the one that brought Robert De Niro and Al Pacino together in cinematic history, is a remake? Yes, Heat is essentially a do-over of Michael Mann's own made-for-TV movie, L.A. Takedown. But with its multi-layered characters, intense gunfight scenes, and high-stakes drama, Heat didn't just raise the temperature, it ignited the screen. You search for the scent of your prey, and then you hunt them down. That's the only thing you're committed to. It keeps me sharp, on the edge, where I gotta be. That's what I want full surveillance. Round the clock, we never close open seven days a week. You're a fugitive number one with a bullet. It's double the risk here. You're wrong. It's four times the risk, and I'm double the worst trouble you ever had. The Fly. This is a case where the remake surpasses the original by a country mile, or let's say, a fly's flight. Director David Cronenberg took the 1958 film and, with Jeff Goldblum and some groundbreaking special effects, created a horror movie that wasn't just about a human-fly hybrid. It's a visceral exploration of disease and deterioration that leaves you horrified, moved, and a bit wary of teleportation pods. Those weird hairs that were growing out of your back, I had them analyzed. But they were definitely not human. If you saw how scared and angry and desperate he is... I'm sure Typhoid Mary was a very nice person, too, when you saw her socially. No! You're afraid to be destroyed and recreated, aren't you? You're changing, Seth. Who'd have thought that a remake of a 1960s B-movie about a carnivorous plant could become a beloved classic? Little Shop of Horrors, with its catchy tunes, hilariously dark storyline, and Rick Moranis' infectious charm, is the epitome of a remake done right. The plant, Audrey II, voiced by the incomparable Levi Stubbs, steals the show. The film takes the campy original and nurtures it into a blossoming musical comedy that we're more than happy to feed with our attention. Given you sunlight. The Parent Trap. A remake of the 1961 film of the same name that made us forget the original, Lindsay Lohan in The Parent Trap, was so convincing as both Hallie and Annie that we're still not sure she doesn't have a twin. 
This delightful family comedy about separated twins switching places to reunite their parents made a whole generation check their family albums for a lost sibling. It's warm, it's funny, and it's proof that the right remake can trap your heart even better than the original. That's my mom. That's my dad. And you and I are like, like sisters. Hi. I like twins. I'll go back to London as you, and you go back to California as me. If we switch, they'll have to unstitch us. And when they do, they'll have to meet again face to face. Honey, you never looked better. The Italian Job took the 1969 British classic and gave it a 21st century makeover, swapping out Michael Caine for Mark Wahlberg and tossing in Jason Statham and Charlize Theron for extra zing. What we got was a heist flick as shiny and stylish as the Mini Coopers tearing through the streets. It's a wild ride, loaded with suspense, action, and humor, hitting all the right notes. By the end, you might just forget there was an original movie at all. You tried to hack the system. You ready to create the biggest traffic jam in the history of Los Angeles? I'm so ready. Oops. You gonna try to crack my safe? He took my father from me. I'm taking this. You just blew the best thing you had going for you. You just blew the element of surprise. 21 Jump Street is a rarity. A TV to movie adaptation that not only didn't crash and burn, but managed to do donuts around its original premise. This movie, starring Channing Tatum and Jonah Hill as undercover cops in a high school, is downright hilarious. It takes the basic premise of the 1980s show and cranks up the humor to 11. The result is a laugh-out-loud comedy that shows remakes don't always have to follow the rules of the road. Do you even know the Miranda rights? <laughs> Look, it obviously starts with, do you have the right to remain an attorney? Did you say you have the right to be an attorney? You do have the right to be an attorney if you want to.